I'm waiting for an answer. Where exactly are you going? Out. That is no answer. Out where? I don't know where. But it's dangerous for a young girl to be out. There's a madman loose. So what? And please don't be flippant about it. Who's being flippant? Suppose I really don't care. Well, I do care. About what? About you. Oh, don't make me laugh. Carol, you can't go on this way. Don't worry, Mother. I'll round up some protection. I never have much trouble finding a companion. You know that. It's like that Buzz, I suppose, or whatever his name is. I could do worse. And if I have the chance, I probably will. Carolyn, I should think it would make your flesh crawl just looking at him. Not as much as some other man I could mention. Face it, Mother. You've already claimed the prize in that category. I won't have you talking to me this way. Which is one of the reasons I'm going out. Because if I stay, I'll say things a lot worse. Carolyn, please don't go out. It, it's too dangerous. <laughs> I can't set the date. I haven't heard anything definite from my lawyers. Maybe you didn't, but I did. <laughs> really, Liz, you should make a greater effort. You talked to Mr. Garner? Yes. And what he had to say to me was most gratifying. Now, if my arithmetic is correct, a suitable date would be two weeks from today. Two weeks? Yes, it's a pity we have to wait so long, but it can't be helped. Well, that's hardly enough time. I, I have things to do. Well, I'm sure you'll find time to do them. Now, why don't we make the announcement at the first opportunity? Two weeks. I, I can't possibly. Now, Liz. Please, Jason. <laughs> you are sky high. <laughs> Your daughter seems to be on an extended celebration in anticipation of the happy event. I prefer you didn't discuss my daughter with me. They're going to be married. That's the way they want it. Oh, it is, it is. My mother's been pining away with passion, yay, these long years. And now the story is about to have its own happy ending. Isn't that right, Mother? Carolyn, I think you should go to your room. Uh, Liz, perhaps Carolyn would be interested in hearing about our decision. Decision? Yes, you see, your mother and I have finally decided on a date for the wedding. Oh? <laughs> Jason, I hardly think this is the time to bring that up. The date will be two weeks from today. But does that surprise you, Carolyn? Why, oh, that's splendid. Obviously, you've been celebrating something, and I thought we might as well give you something to celebrate about. That's right! Did you know that's what we were celebrating? A coming marriage? Is that what it was? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, go on, let's tell them you believe me. Tell them you agree with me. We shouldn't be secret about it. Jason, that's please. right, Mother. Why be secret? Carolyn, I told you to go to your room. You want to come, Buzz? You like weddings? Why don't you come? I think I gotta be out of town that day. Or I got an even better idea. I love weddings. Especially my own. Why don't we get married, Buzz? Hey! You and me! Yeah! Carol, that's enough. How about it, Buzz? I want to be a bride. Two weeks from today. You and me. I'm the bride and you're the groom, right? Carolyn, please be serious. What makes you think I'm not? Don't forget, Buzz. Two weeks from today, you and me, bride and groom. <laughs> Because I'm getting married, you know. Jason, that will never happen. Stick around for a few hours. Oh, and you meanwhile, you might utilize the time to pack up your own things. And now, will you excuse me? I do need a moment alone so that I can contemplate the happiness I have to look forward to. Oh, and Carolyn. And by the way, no doubt the wedding will be too moving for words. So I'll say it now. Say what? Goodbye.
I wonder what's keeping the judge. Uh, I hope he won't be late. Am I early? Carolyn, I thought you'd gone out. I'm back. Well, your mother would be happy to see you. As of course I am. I didn't know there would be anyone outside the family. Mr. Devlin is here because I invited him. He seems to persist in the notion that the wedding will not take place, and I thought this was one way of convincing him. I certainly hope so. Ah, the judge. That means we can start on time. But I'm sure you will have other plans later on. Yes. I have plans. Uh, good evening. Well, I see we're almost all assembled. Ah, Roger. How are you, Judge? I'm fine, thank you. We haven't seen you at the club lately. And this must be the group. Yes. A pleasure, Mr. McGuire. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Devlin, I didn't expect to see you. Oh, I stray from the straight and narrow every once in a while. Uh, yes. Hello, Carolyn. Hello. How pretty you have grown. Thank you. Well, uh, where is the bride? Where is my dear Elizabeth? She'll be right down. Now, you must be Miss Winters. Yes, how do you do? Fine, thank you. And I must not leave without getting your signature as witness. We want this to be legal, don't we? Yes. Can I offer you a drink, Judge? Oh, thank you. Carolyn. Well, oh, don't look so surprised, Vicky. You don't think I'd miss my mother's wedding? No, of course not. <coughs> uh, Vicky, are you sure that uh, Liz doesn't want you to help her with something? She wanted me to tell everyone that she'd be down in a minute. And what a beautiful bride she will be. I remember when she married Paul Stoddard in this very room. People gasped when she came through the door. She was so beautiful. And she still is. Oh, there was a fine crowd here that day. And not a murmur among them as they stood looking toward the door, waiting. Elizabeth. I'm sorry if I've kept you all waiting. Merely for 20 years, my dear, and it was worth every one of them. Don't you think so, Judge? I have thought so for years. That's it. Carol. Hello, Mother. I'm so glad you could be here. I knew you would be. Rick, I see you decided to come. Yes. We may as well start. Yes, I think we may as well. Uh, you join me, Elizabeth? Uh, uh, Judge, uh, where do you want us to stand? Well, since this is an informal wedding, uh, we will eliminate the preliminaries. If you were two, we'll stand in front of me. Here. Right. Oh, dear. Could you come by me? I'll ask the usual questions, and you'll give the usual answers. Then, Jason, you'll slip on the ring, and after a few minutes, it'll all be over. Ah, no. It'll be the beginning of our happiness. Happiness? Now, if you will just join hands. Do you, Elizabeth Stoddard, take this man, Jason McGuire, to be your lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward in sickness and in health until death do you part? 
Answer, I do, dear. Answer? Say simply, I do. I... I... Liz? I know. Liz? No. No, I can't. Come on, Leave her alone. Wait. Elizabeth. What is it? I killed Paul Stoddard. And that man was my accomplice. Elizabeth, you don't know what you're talking about. I did it, you know I did it. And I, don't listen to her. And you buried him. No, Liz, you're being hysterical. Let her talk, Jason, let her talk. Liz, what are you saying? I had to tell the truth or I'd have gone mad. It's the strain she's been put under, you see? See what it's done to her? Now, listen, let me take you up to your room. Don't come near me. You heard her, Jason. Now look here. Don't you interfere. I'm not interfering. I want Liz to say what she's got to say. I've said it. That's all there is to say. But Liz, how? I don't believe you. It's true. It happened right here in this room. Yes, please, stop it. Elizabeth, please, just a minute. If that's right, you talk. Before you say anything more, whether you wish to reconsider it later or not, I'm afraid that I'll have to leave. As a judge, I may be called to participate in this. But there's nothing to it. That may be true, and I certainly hope so. But Liz, as your friend, is there anything I can do? Before Liz says another word, I want Garner called in here. Oh, no. The woman doesn't need a lawyer. She needs a doctor. She's ill. Anyone I can see that. I don't need a lawyer, and I don't need a doctor. I want to tell the truth. Especially to Carolyn. Carolyn, you killed him? You killed my father? Elizabeth, I must go before you say anything more. But if there's anything you want me to do, please call. Please. Well, now we, we must all try to be very calm. I almost killed him. What? Carolyn, what are you talking about? Jason, I was standing right there. I was going to shoot him. You were going to shoot him? I couldn't let you marry him. I had my finger on the trigger. No. Liz seems to have done you a favor. If you hadn't stopped the wedding, you probably would be dead now. But I haven't done anything wrong. Wrong? You said you were going to help me. And you buried him. And then came back to blackmail me. Can't you see? This is hysteria. She is hysteria. Tell them, Mrs. Stoddard, it'll be better that way. You killed my father. I couldn't help it. Why? He was going to leave. No. No, that wasn't the reason. Liz, maybe you, Carolyn, and I should go up in the study if you want to talk. No. I want Jason to know I'm telling the truth at last. Vicky already knows. Vicky, that was a secret you had no right to keep. This man has been blackmailing my sister. I swore her to secrecy. If she had told, I would have denied it and sent her away. She had no choice. I wanted to tell. You don't know how often. Well, I'm sorry, but I have no interest in staying here any longer listening to these absurdities. Jason, I'm afraid you're going to have to. Anyone who knows Elizabeth would know that she's incapable of murder. That isn't true. I was ready to kill. It happened in this very room. There was a storm. I remember the storm. The lightning crashing around the house seemed bent on destruction. Paul was standing by the fireplace. His bag was packed and beside him. He was drinking what seemed to be his final toast to Collinwood. I'd discovered that he was planning to leave that night and never come back. I also knew something else that made it necessary for me to stop him. When I told him, he only laughed. How well I knew that love. How often I'd heard it. Cruel, mocking, 
I tried not to hear it that night, but I couldn't shut it out, no matter how hard I tried. I don't know what you're so angry about. You should be happy I'm going. I'm not trying to stop you from going. I'm trying to stop what you're doing. What exactly am I doing? I know what's in the suitcase. You do? What's in the suitcase? Bonds, jewelry, worth a fortune. You exaggerate. I know what's kept in the safe in the study, so I know exactly what's in the suitcase. Well, let's just call it a settlement. I can't let you take it. You can go if you want to, but that suitcase stays here. You're the one who's always said that I have an unnatural avarice. And now you say you'll do anything for the sake of hanging on to a little bit of money. It's far from a little bit. Not compared to the Collins fortune. It's part of the f Collins family money and you know it. Yes. I'm your husband. I'm only taking what's mine. It isn't yours. Oh, all right, so some of it's yours. Now, you were never interested in money anyway. At least that's what you always said. You're taking what belongs to Carolyn. A parting gift to her father. She'll never miss it. You're right, she'll never miss it. Because I'm not going to let you take it. Tell her it's a small payment for having to put up with her for the past two years. You are cruel. Liz, it's getting late. I'd like nothing more than a homey evening by the fireside discussing domestic matters. But I have an appointment. I know. You're expecting your friend, Jason McGuire. Liz, you've been snooping. He's found a way to transfer the bonds and sell the jewelry. Well, I must admit, Jason's a very capable man with indispensable connections. If I don't stop you, the police will. You'll never tell them. Won't I? No. No, you'll do anything to avoid a scandal. Anything that might tarnish the family name. Don't be too sure of that. Even if you did, what would it prove? I'm your husband. I'm performing a transaction at your request. No one will believe you. Liz, dear, you know better than anyone how persuasive I can be. And now, goodbye. Put down that suitcase. I warn you. I'm sorry, I don't have time to listen. I'm serious, Paul. I've never been more serious in my life. <laughs> and you never looked more ridiculous. I've had more than I can stand. So have I. Don't come one step nearer. If I do, you're going to be very sorry. I mean it. And so do I. Now listen, I don't want to hurt you our very last night, so put that thing down. I can't take you, let you take what rightfully belongs to Carolyn. I'm not interested in Carolyn. I'm leaving. Ah! No. No. Well, I'm just about to. Tell me what? Well, the uh, trunk that we dug up in the basement. Yes. The one that McGuire buried Paul Stoddard in. Yes. Well, maybe you can answer this. Why is it empty? Empty? Absolutely empty. You might as well tell us everything, McGuire. We've got enough on you now to give you a nice long vacation as it is. Jason, haven't you tormented me enough? Oh, Liz, he wouldn't understand what you're talking about. I'd like to speak to Mrs. Stoddard alone for a few minutes, if I may. You all tell me the truth? Well, I think we ought to have a little chat uh, together, just the two of us. I'm sorry, but that's out of the question. Roger, please, if he'll tell me the truth. No, Liz, he will only try to make another deal with you. If I have anything to say, I intend to say it to Mrs. Stoddard alone. Otherwise, I've said everything I didn't say. Then come upstairs. Are you sure that this is the way you want it? Well, if this is the only way I can find out the truth. I'm afraid it is. Liz, don't you understand? He's only looking for another chance to get away. No, he can't get out of the house. It'll be all right. Let's, let's let them talk. Is that the truth? 
That's the truth, Liz. Now, would you like to call in your friend, the Sheriff, so that I can be on my way as soon as possible? Yes, of course. I can hardly believe it. Now, this time, Liz, you can believe it. Now, please, call in the Sheriff. Gentlemen, Mrs. Stoddard has something to tell you. You come in, all of you. What's happened? What have you been saying to you? The truth, Roger. The truth. I did not kill Paul Stoddard. I knew it. Tell them, Jason. Tell them what you told me. Well, it's really very simple. No doubt you've already guessed it. You only said that he was dead so that you could blackmail Mrs. Stoddard. Ah, no, not originally. I only stunned Paul when I hit him, even though there was a cut on his head. Then they must have made some arrangement between them, between Paul Stoddard and Jason. Well, poor, poor Paul was not very bright, you know. Many of the time I had to, uh, you know, uh, formulate plans for him and... Uh, where the night of the uh, murder was no different. Exactly what happened? When I came into the room, he was sitting up rubbing in the back of his head. Right away, I told him very quickly that he was a fool and very wrong to try to get away with so much money. But no wonder Liz wouldn't let him go. I told him that a little bit less would still be plenty for both of us. Well, as usual, Paul bowed to my uh, superior uh, judgment. So you went ahead with the burial and then you split the price with Stoddard? Well, Paul Stoddard uh, requested a, a slightly larger cut, but then he's notoriously uh, greedy. Not so greedy as you. You had to come back for more. That wasn't greed. That was necessity. I was broke. And how is there anything else you'd like to know? Where is Paul Stoddard? I don't know. I lost contact with him in Hong Kong more than ten years ago. But he's alive. Well, his health was very good at that time. Oh, still alive somewhere. I know you must all excuse me. Just where do you think you're going? Well, I don't know exactly. I understand that Canada is rather beautiful this time of year. Well, you're not going to Canada. You're coming with me. No, wait. Yes, what do you mean? Let him go. What do you mean, let him go? Even if there was no murder, he's still this blackmail. Blackmail? What blackmail? I'm dropping all charges. But you can't. I had to. So you made one final deal with her, huh? Can she do this? I promised if he told me the truth, I'd forget all about the blackmail. How could you make a promise like that? It's very simple. If she insists, the discretionary power of the authorities allows them to drop the charges. Isn't that correct, Sheriff? If the offended party makes a strong plea. <laughs> but I'm sure Liz will make a very persuasive one. Liz, you can't. I gave him my word that I would. I can't go back on my word. I had to know the truth, and now I know it. For many, no price is too high for the truth. And now, gentlemen, I really must leave you. Wait a minute. Sheriff, I want that man arrested. Roger, I gave him my word. But I did not give mine. Sheriff, I insist, insist, arrest that man. And exactly what are the charges? Extortion, blackmail, fraud. Against whom? Against my family. I'm sorry, but that isn't quite right. All of my activities were directed, uh, well, primarily towards your sister. You took family mon money from her. Business money. Roger, please, don't you understand? I only want to be rid of this man once and for all. Yes, we cannot let him do what he did and then get away. What would you prefer? Public charges brought against him, followed by a public trial? You didn't think of that now, did you? The scandal. The humiliation for me, telling everyone what I've been through. I can't do it, Roger. Do we have to let him go? Please, yes. I never want to hear his name again. You know what I've been through already. I agree with Liz. I'd hate to see her go through a public trial. Well, I'm happy to see some sense from someone here. Not to mention the uh, compassion for Liz. Compassion? 
You make a mockery of every word you say. After what you put my sister through. All right, Roger, let's not get too excited. Well, I really think I must be going. Just a minute, McGuire. I have a few words I want to say to you. A fun farewell, no doubt, Sheriff. You can call it that. I'm giving you until sunup to get out of Collinsport. I'm giving orders to my men to pick you up if you're found anywhere in the vicinity after six o'clock. Well, no, I'm not sure you have the right to do that. Oh, I have the right, and I'm going to exercise it. But I'll have to make some arrangements before I leave. You've made enough arrangements around here, McGuire. And I hope I never see you around again. Just let me handle it, Burke. Okay. But I hope you heard me, McGuire. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you're going to have to do me one more favor. Are you kidding? Please. Anything, as long as he goes. Just give me until tomorrow evening. Sundown. That's all I ask. What for? What do you have in mind? A man just can't pack up and leave in a couple of hours. Liz, please. That's a final request. Please ask them to let me stay until tomorrow evening. Give it to him. Anything. Only make him leave this house. Please. All right, gentlemen. After tomorrow evening, you won't see hide nor hair of me again. You have my... Don't give me your word. It's about the most worthless commodity on the market. Just see that you're out of town. By tomorrow evening. Liz? Thank you. For everything. He's gone. At last, he's gone. We shouldn't have let him go. I'd like to know what his arrangements are. No, we're better off not knowing. We're better off not knowing anything about Jason McGuire. I'll get you some. But where are they? In the table. Get them. Get out. <laughs> They're not all the jewels with it. There's some Barnabas wants me to sell the rest of sealed up on the wall. I haven't got time to get them. Sealed up on the wall, are they? Well, they weren't sealed up on the wall last night, Willie. Barnabas told me to put them there. I put them there this morning. You're lying, Willie. I'm not lying. Well, then open up the wall and get them. I can. I haven't got the time. Take these. They're worth a fortune. I want the rest of them, Willie. I told you they're sealed up in the wall. You know what I think, Willie? I think you're lying. I don't think they're sealed up with the wall at all. I think they're hidden right here, in this coffin. Oh, they're not in there, you've got to believe me. Then why is this coffin here? Because it's his coffin! Oh, come on, Willie, don't start that again! Please, Jason, you've got more than enough. Get out of here before it's too late! I'm going to open up this coffin, Willie, and you're not going to stop me! That's right, Willie. And I wouldn't listen to you. Would I? 